Well, good evening everyone. I've got to say, it doesn't get any better than this for me. Mark Boyle, Clint Ianson, semi-final of the pro event, Isle of Man. What a match this could be. It just, uh, for me, it, it's about as good a match as that. It, this is pretty much the one. You know, at the moment you've got Boyle is is playing as well as he's ever been playing, um, and Clint's current world champion, uh, just so consistent. And um, I just, yeah, a coin flip for me. I can't pick a winner. Um, and I'm actually looking forward to to watching it. Yeah, it's definitely one of those matches that uh, I think we'd both be watching, wouldn't we? If we weren't in the comms box, I think I we'd be out there in the crowd. I genuinely would. You know, I, I know it sounds a bit unprofessional or whatever, but because, you know, I'm, I'm commentating, but I'm not a massive watcher of pool, um, aside from, you know, when I'm not playing tournaments and there's a stream on and stuff like that, but I would genuinely stop what I'm doing to watch this if I was at home. So... Mark Boyle takes the first break, and once again, what a thunderous cut break that was. I mean, he's he's, he's put a five off the break there. What a joke that is. The power he gets into that is ridiculous. Yeah, I've said it many times. I have no idea how he generates so much power with the level of control that he has. It's, uh, it's remarkable. Yeah. And he's got to feel a little bit unlucky that the cue ball has ended up where it has. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, I suppose, I suppose the more, the more balls you take off the table, the the, the fewer there's going to be for you to, to have as your as your starter. Well, he wasn't as bad as I th first thought he was. Managed to cut that back into the middle. Yeah, I think he's probably made it look a little bit easier than it was. It was a thin cut. You see there, he, he, it's a little bit of right-hand side, isn't there? Tracer right. Yeah, and that cue ball just herded towards the corner pocket. But what a weapon that break is. I've said it many, many times in commentary. To generate that much power and not go airborne is so difficult. I said before his uh, semi-final against uh, his quarter-final against Ross Fernie that um, uh, if Ross continued to break the way that he did against Gav Robinson, given that we know how consistent Boyle's break is, it, it's kind of a handicap, really. You can you can you can make him two 0 up before they've started. You know, if if they both break how they normally do or they they they, they were and uh, how Ross did in the previous match because Boyle I've, I've just never seen him break bad never do you know yesterday I think one match was probably the worst I've seen him break yeah and I mean it, it, by no means was it bad but it's probably the only time I've not seen him be devastating yeah you know it's it's just a massive weapon it really is Add to that his uh, his unbelievable cue ball control. Um, he has the white on a string. He really does. And um, Bottle digs himself out of holes when he's uh, when he really needs it. He's got a big shot in him as well. Yeah, he really has. I've seen some fantastic shots. Uh, yeah. When he's been in in real real trouble. Yeah. High percentage of times that he, he he just finds that shot. Yeah, and uh, but uh, <laughs> add all those together, and and you wonder how he ever gets beat. Yeah, he is uh, the real deal, no doubt. A lot of players' favourite player to watch. Certainly one of mine, if not the my favourite player. I think probably of all of them. But Clint Ianson, I mean. We could say a similar thing about Clint, couldn't we? Maybe the break is not as consistent, but I'd have to say that Mark Boyle, for me, is the most consistent of everybody that breaks for making balls. That cut break is just uh, devastating. Yeah, I'd agree with that, yeah. yeah. 
we, we, we can all, you know, uh, form when when you're playing well, you break it. And there's, sometimes oh, I was breaking great in that match, or I tend to find like when I'm queuing well, I'm breaking well. So if I if I get to the later stages of a tournament, that's when I'll start to break really well. But he's just like it the entire time from the first frame of the tournament to the last. Uh, consistency is obviously everything, and it's um, it's why he's ranked where he is. That's why he wins as much as he wins. But he's up against Clint, world champ. Not, not what you'd call a. a this might sound harsh, but you know Stuart Bingham won the the the, the worlds. Do you know what I mean? But he's he, he'd never, he wasn't a serial winner before. You know, Clint Clint's a serial winner. He'd been to the final of the Worlds before as well. Won lots of tours, pro events. Um, he is elite. So he won't be phased by... If, if anything, he'll be up for it. And he'll probably rise to the occasion of, of playing Boyle. And um, don't be surprised to see an absolute masterclass from these two. Yeah, well, that shot where he took it into the corner and found position... On the ball that he's just made there, that was a, a master class in its own right, yep. positionally. Absolutely pinpoint. And uh, as you as you were saying, Dan, he'll be really up for this match. Yeah. It'd almost probably be, a, probably be quite weird for Clint to play in a game where he's not a clear favourite. Won't happen often. Obviously, current world champion. Um, and was was one of the elite before he won the worlds anyway but it, w it will feel strange for him not to, to to know that there's probably people out there that will say no 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 Boyle's going to win Boyle's going to win uh, and I think that will really that will really sort of focus his mind and, and get him up for it, it I mean he's going to be up for it anyway it's in the semis of the grand finals it's 10 grand to the winner but more of a point to prove almost you know I am the world champ I am you know I am the man to beat sort of thing yeah, and it's really important, more than ever, that he uh, gets a good start in this match. Yeah. Up to press. This has been some uh, clearance. That, f that shot from the corner to gain position on the red near the black early on. Absolutely pinpoint, as I said before. Yeah, Here you can see. Red to corner. Two cushions he can run. Black yeah. to the same corner if he wants. Yeah, I think that's what he's just deciding now, whether he tops it through and plays the black into the same corner or whether he swings it round with run inside. Well, he's just about just about got there. Yeah, tad short, but uh, should be no problem. Yeah, I think he did look at playing that a bit firmer and coming round to play the black into the opposite corner, but he should be fine just. Just taking his time. One each. Perfect start. Dean Shields on one of the other pro tables. These uh, these three tables you can see on this uh, on your screens now, just at the back of where the mainstream table is. Yeah. All superb conditions, and uh, it's Dean Shields who leads one nil at the moment. That was a clever little shot. It's a great shot, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Great good. shot. Good vision. Really well executed. Just lifts that yellow from the the cushion, and leaves himself in. Uh, Prime position. Yeah, looks certain to be going 2 0. So let's have another look at this. It sort of threatens to go dry and then a couple go in. You know, just the two this time. Yeah. He just gets so much movement on that pack. 
Yeah. Just watch this. The ball's all heard towards this this middle. Yeah. I mean that is. Look at that for a leave now. Yeah, I, th I think long yellow and top it through, and uh, pretty sure they all go. It's quite actually a little bit easier than it first looked, maybe. Assuming these two yellows that are together nearest the cluster both go into the corner and they're not covering each other. He's taking his extension to um, as they normally do at the start of the clearance to figure out what he wants to do. Is he looking at to the middle? He might be middle, yeah, and then just rest on the red on the side maybe. Yeah, he had the angle there. You could just see it's Bins the cue ball. Yeah. So could could well have taken that long and run through. Absolutely agree with you. But he took it into the middle, and now he's behind these two yellows. Yeah, you see him just just peer through the gap there. We had a really good camera angle there. He just tops that through a tiny bit. The uh, the yellow closest to the black. Uh, there is a little window there. I think he's just on it. I don't know if he's run too far. I think he's just on it. Would would have liked to have run a, a little bit less than that and, and be able to punch that in and bring the white across to the left of this next one. So he's going to play a cannon. It's just gone a little bit wrong. Me wrong? I'm, I'm, sure I'll, I'm sure I'll do what... He does best and find a way around it, but if he'd have just run half a, say half a cue ball less on his last shot, he could have punched that in and brought the white out to the left of the one he's about to play now. Yeah, he's going to have to play this middle, so his bottom cushion probably side, and then you'll see, well he doesn't want to go in that middle, he didn't want the bump, but you know, he's probably still okay on this. Yeah. It must go to the middle. I think that's what he was playing playing on. I don't know if he's got a full pocket, but yeah, I think he has got a full pocket from the overhead that we can see. But he's obviously running away from this yellow. Just needs a little bit of attention. Yeah, they're not. Well, oh, where's the white? Wow, where's the white? Wow, that's a double whammy there for Clint. It looked like the yellow wasn't going to drop. Then it looked like the white was going to drop. Yeah, it was an only just, was that? Oh, good queuing. Over the rim of the middle pocket, but shouldn't be a problem for Mark. 2-1. The perfect start. Three frames. Three clearances from the break. Didn't expect anything less really from these two. No, wasn't plain sailing. Had three yellows left, played one into the corner, bumped into another yellow and didn't quite leave the angle he wanted. But he managed to run round table and uh, diced with a couple of pockets there in that finish. We nearly lost the cue ball. Nearly missed a yellow into middle, but uh, eventually didn't cause him any problems. And he now has a 2-1 lead. And as you can see, top of your screen there, the latest score, Dean Shields has taken a 2-1 lead in that as well. Yeah, two very hard matches to call. I uh, wouldn't be surprised with any combination of these four in the final. Oh, he's made a ball. Yellow down. Just take another look at this break. So, complete contrasting styles. As far as the break goes. Yellow's looking the stronger colour set, I would have thought. 
Yeah, I'm just wondering if he might play a plant here. The red in between the two yellows. Yeah, he's just lining it up now. It's hard to see how it can go wrong, really. Just make sure of the pot. You're probably going to push the other yellow towards the corner pocket. Uh, you're almost certainly going to be on the one over the middle. It's worked out. Worked out very well for him. So now it's just about picking your route. Yeah, the ball below the bulk line. Yeah. Needs to get down there at some point. Oh, looked like he might have missed that. So he could play corner, middle. I would think that the ball below the bulk line could be his, uh, his last ball to get to black if he chooses. Yeah, I think bottom right corner, middle next. Yeah. And then the one in the middle of the table to get to the one at the top. So that first shot, a lot of players wouldn't have seen it. Might have taken a slightly easier option or, a, you know, it wasn't an absolute gimme, the um, the plant, but stretching a bit as well. But he, he knew it was worth the risk. Yeah, it had uh, good rewards there. He knew he was kicking a yellow towards the other, the other corner. And as long as he made that uh, plant, he knew he'd open the game up. So this ball to corner, just run through. Just wants an angle on this final yellow, and that'll do him. Yeah, that'll do. Bit of top and left to bring the white up. Anywhere around about the middle pocket is fine. Just make sure he gets uh, he gets the left hand side on here. Yeah. Make sure it takes. Doesn't want to be hamper queuing. He's fine. What a start this has been. Yeah, everything we hoped for and expected. It's black for two apiece. Yeah, faultless. Four breaks. Four clearances. And we often say that the break is the most important shot. Obviously, the eight ball going down is the most important shot in a in a game, but the break counts, you know, more than anything else. And at this level, I mean, if, if you dry break in this match, that could be the difference. Well, it looks like it. Yeah, it really could be the difference. See there, three one Dean Shields in the other semi final. Both matches not hanging around. You get that though, semi finals, everyone's everyone's playing well. Can't fluke your way to a semi final, so you're queuing well, it's gonna be fluent, it's gonna be good. Yeah, Craig Brown there, dry break unfortunately. I suppose there's the one good thing is he's left a messy table. And there's not many messy tables when this band's uh, breaking, um, trust me. When he half empties the table when he breaks most of the time. Yeah, another two, three, four. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Get the power in that break. Yeah. It's like magnets. You can't, you can't even. <laughs> you see it a lot in comps and, and, and people using the cut break, and out of sort of frustration and jealousy, people start saying, "Oh, are they tilting the pack?" Are they? We've got referees. He's just, he's just absolutely hammering them. It's not. It, there's nothing you can do. You just got, just got to admire it. This shot's crucial. Yeah, and I think he's okay. I think he's nailed that, yeah. He's deliberately played on the one in the right middle next because uh, the one at the bottom of the table doesn't go into the obvious pocket, so he needs to get on the right-hand side of the table here. I think he's just about played it perfect. They're your little shots, your touch shots, that I think a lot of people don't appreciate either how important they are or, or you know, how how 
how good you are to, to nail those shots all the time. You, you see when they just run slightly out of position, three, four shots later, they're trying to get on it, get on it again. You know, and then people will walk away from the match saying, oh, well, I only missed one ball. but Well, you did, but you made it hard for yourself because you didn't have the cue ball on a string like this man has at the moment. Yeah, pinpoint. He left the perfect position to run through to his awkward red. And once he'd done that, well, there's not a lot to do here, is there? But this is the thing. He's that good, he makes it look that easy. I can assure you, it's nothing like as easy as uh, Mark makes it look. Yeah, I've had that conversation plenty of times when people say, oh, well, he didn't have to do nothing special. You know, they, they came out easy. They were droppings. No, they, he just made it look like them. White's on a string. Never has to do anything difficult. Yeah, but when he is asked the question... He uh, he just pulls shots out from uh, nowhere when he needs to. And it is rare that he needs to. Such is the quality of his cue ball. Yeah. The perfect final. Uh, perfect match continues. Five breaks, five clearances. Paul cannot be played any better than this. That was the shot there you were talking about, Dan. Yep. You'd think there'd be nerves out there. You, ten thousand. They're two matches away from ten thousand pounds. They just. That's what the best do. Was it Steve Davis saying play like it means nothing when it means everything? It's very calm, casual, relaxed but focused. Yeah, and it's not easy to do. I'm sure they'll have both been feeling the nerves before this match. I know that Mark was uh, chewing away on his gum, but you wouldn't think it when you watch them both on the table. And that's the mark of a, a great... Needs a ball. He's got one. He's got two. Has he got a starter? Well, he desperately wants a red, doesn't he? I think he's got a red to middle. I think he does, yeah. I think you're right. I mean, worst case scenario, he's got a yellow in the in the corner and with a perfect angle to go into that cluster, but I, th I think he's just about on the red in the middle. Yeah, I believe the red goes to middle. So, this is the big shot. Missable, these. Queuing off the cushion. Yeah, cool as a cucumber. Dean Shields 4-1 up now. Craig Brown. So, be running this ball through. Right hand spin on the cue ball. Yeah, and that really took. So, just deciding here how he goes about this clearance. The black not hampered in any way. So, pretty straightforward. Yep, perfect. Come out far enough now so that you can just top this through. Trace a left maybe to bring the cue ball back up to roughly where it is now. This is a hard game if you're watching at home, I promise. They're making it look like like the easiest game in the world. It's, it's really not, I can assure you. Well, I did say it right at the start of this match. It doesn't get any better than this. But we really are. And given a treat here. What a standard. What a match. Wow. Well. Yeah, the perfect run continues. Three breaks apiece. Three break and clearances apiece. I mean, it's hard enough to, to, to pot off six breaks in a row. 
let alone clear off six breaks in a row. Ridiculous standard. Craig Brown looking in good position there to get it back to 4 2. Assuming that red into the left middle that he's uh, going to get on next is not too acute an angle. I think he's okay there. Must be a very good standard on there as well. I mean, they're, they're rattling through the frames as well. Also on a shot clock, by the way. Yep, so he's got red onto red. We can't tell from here whether that uh, eight goes to that left corner. But, uh, well, anyway, we won't know now. Back on the mainstream table once again. How many is he going to get off this break? Wow. Cue balls. Oh, oh and wow. Oh, you see, Clint was just getting out of his seat there and then saw the black dropped. Ouch. Ouch. A glimmer. Well, he made that plant. Oh, he's oh, missed no. the eight. He's missed the eight. Craig Brown, what have you done? What have you done there? The scoreboard pressure, 4-1 down. This needs to hold up. He hasn't, has he? He hasn't. needs to hold up. Right, take two. Mark Boyle. Yep. Got to say he was fortunate there that the eight dropped. Very. Make a massive difference in this match. Wow. Wow. I want to see a replay. That that just I've never seen the pack split so. Jeez, well, that, that's, I don't think I've ever seen him hit him as hard as that. That's ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> it is mind blowing to watch it's somebody cut break at that pace. It really is. Yeah, and keep the white on the table. That's the thing. I've tried it a few times. I've to not go airborne, it's incredible. Yeah, I fly the white off the table. It puts you off. Look at the instant explosion there. The action he gets on the pack is, is ridiculous. Yeah, it's such a huge advantage, it really is. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it must seem like that sometimes to his <laughs> opponents, I'm sure. <laughs> Slightly run out of position there. Hamper queuing. He's going to have to... Well, I, I, I don't think the white can go in off because the yellow's in the way. So I think key here, if he's going to cut this one into the left middle is just make sure of the pot. Uh, if you graze the yellow, or, or as long as you play at a, a, a gentle enough pace, it's almost going to be impossible for you not to be on something. Yeah, and this is what we were saying. Perfect. When he needs to pull the shot out, when he gets out of position, yeah, the very rare occasion, he just always seems to find a shot that gets him back in line again. Yeah, and that was very well controlled. He he, he kind of knew the natural angle was just going to flick off the side of the yellow, but the pace he's played out was perfect. Who's going to break first? I mean, this is like a machine against a machine. Two players on cheat mode. Yeah. I, uh, I don't think I've ever seen him hit them as hard as that, cut break-wise. This is going to be seven from seven. Amazing. Amazing standard.
this will be the most important semi-final of Boyle's season. Uh, obviously, Clint's been in a world semi-final earlier this year. But th this match has got a lot riding on it. And, um, you know, some crumble under the pressure. Not these two. Yeah, and some thrive. And I think both these players thrive under the utmost pressure. They feed off it. Amazing. And it's hard to believe, but Clint has been flawless up to press. And yet he must feel under pressure. Yeah. He's 4-3 behind. He knows he has to make a ball. And effectively, he has to run out. If he doesn't run out, he's in trouble. There you see Dean Shields, 5-1 ahead. And at the table, with what looks like two simple enough reds. To go 6-1. It's a demolition yeah. job. Yeah, black to corner. Well, this could be two of the fastest semi-finals I think I've ever seen. Yeah. What time did this start? I didn't take note, I will be honest with you. We may be able to find out. I can find out on Q-School, which I will do now. Have we had a dry? We have. And our first dry break. Yeah, we've just been informed that both semis kicked off at the same time. We just don't know what that time is at the moment, but we are looking now. But yeah, as we say that, poor old Clint. Comes up dry. And he's not left the it's not left it that difficult, is he? It's a good split. Yeah. Good split. I mean if the yellow passes the red into the middle then I would fancy Mark to, to to clear on reds or yellows here. Yeah, and this is these are ominous times really for Clint. Four three down, dry break. Sounds negative, but it does. It can pop in your head that ah, yeah. oh, that's me six three now. It, th those thoughts can go through your head. Just look at this table now. Takes these two yellows at the bark end. Works his way back up. And if he is to take out this clearance, five three lead with the break. And the consistency of his break. Yeah, you can't blame... You couldn't blame Clint for thinking, you know, I'm 6-3 down here. Yeah. And I haven't done anything wrong. Nothing. Didn't hit a bad break there. Just didn't make a ball. Got a lot of action on the pack. So, just drops the yellow into the corner. He just needs to make sure second to last yellow will be the yellow on this bottom cushion. Just needs to make sure he leaves the correct angle to get to his last yellow. So he could run through low, and that's what he's elected to do. Yeah, anything but straight. Looks right. pretty perfect to me. Yeah, it's to me too. Just want to stay away from the side cushion if you can. Straight as possible on this yellow in the middle. Continues to make it look very, very easy. So, we've just uh, had a look. And we believe that these both, both semi-finals started at just after 10 past 7 this evening. So we're looking at, what, 50 minutes? Not even 50 minutes yet. Just gone 45 minutes for 8 frames of perfection. Paul at his absolute finest. Masterclass. 
Well, I've just been told that the first ball in this semi-final was hit at 25 past. Uh, maybe that's just when it went on Q score. Yeah, I thought so it I think the score, yeah. yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. So, yeah, came up on Q score at just after 10 past 7. But the first ball in this semi-final, we're just coming up to half an hour or thereabouts. Just over. So in half an hour, they've both played eight frames. 7-1 yeah. Dean Shields. Trouncing. Just going to be the one where Dean Dean breaks his duck, calls himself the Jimmy White of Paul. Well, we saw Corey Reese do it last season. Clint's just got to stay calm, tell himself that keep doing what you're doing. As uh, good as Mark Boyle's break is, he, he does come dry now and again. It does happen. Tell himself that maybe he's not going to keep getting good splits, and you know, the, the games can turn. Yeah, well, he's already had a little bit of run when he uh, scratched in the corner, and luckily the uh, the eight ball dropped, so it was a re rack. That could be such a difference. Well, once again, smash. So. From Clint's perspective, at least he's got work to do on this. Whether he goes reds or yellows, the red and yellow together on the bottom left-hand side of the table is going to be a problem. This isn't straightforward. You wonder if he did want yellows, would he maybe try the skill shot first up? Bring the cue ball back to roughly the centre of the table, could leave an angle. To be able to break into this other one. Wow. I can't believe that. I don't believe what I've just seen. How's that stayed out? Yeah, I'd like to see that again. How was that not dropped in? I don't... I... Well, no, yeah, no, he's he's hit it into the knuckle, yeah. He has he has tried to play the skill shot as well. And um, what was seemingly a... Hold on, what's Clint doing here? Wow. That... That is a brave shot to play first up when you haven't got a colour. Yeah, and you have to say that when Mark Boyle attempted that skill shot, he is fortunate that red didn't drop. Yeah. Because if it had a done, it had turned over the massive advantage there to yellows. Yeah. So the very small amount of luck in this match that we've had, I think you've got to say it's gone uh, Mark Boyle's way, but it is minuscule. It's just been an absolute pool fest. And that's another oh, great shot. A yes. little bit unlucky there. It's a little bit unlucky because he has played it to perfection. He, he played to bump it out off two rails. Played it perfect. And uh, you, you, sometimes you do just need a, a little bit of luck and he's just not got it there. Yeah, that was a great shot. Great vision. What's he play here? I mean, he's got... Can't cut it, can he? The billiard? Off the yellow into the corner? Surely not the ultra thin cut. The ultra thin cut he's gone for, but the white's in off. Yeah. Where's a chance of that? Yeah, it was in uh, in big trouble there. A little bit of desperation. Tried to find something. Yeah. Got to count himself... Uh, a little bit unfortunate. Such a good shot he played on the red. Yeah, he's the just... opening red that he played down the down the cushion was a great shot. It's a great shot. When you had no colour set. Such a brave shot. Yeah, and the bottom one of those two yellows definitely goes.
And this is looking very much like 6 3. Yeah, takes these two balls up top of the table there. Drops low. Black. There's nothing hampering the black. Black goes in the corner. Just be a question of getting uh, as close to it as possible without taking any risk. So there you see. He likes to try and land on that uh, lower of the two. And he is absolutely perfect, as yep. we've become accustomed to. Yep, very nicely controlled. And I want the cue ball back roughly where it is now for his last ball to get onto the black. Stop shot here. Okay, so he's taking the one. Fair enough. Yeah, I thought it might have gone the other way around as well. Yeah. Who are we to... Uh, question how Mark Boyle sees the game he's playing as well as he's playing just that he's got a shot to play now isn't he you know he's got to trust a little bit to uh, the bounce and the spring off this bottom cushion it's not a really difficult shot but if he took this one second last yeah. then he can yeah I think we both would have taken that second last uh, yeah but look at that. I mean, yeah. Plum. There you go. And that's the reason he used two cushions, not the one. Yeah. And he's uh, obviously so well oiled and plays, you know, so much on these cloths and these tables that he felt like he was in complete control. Had the confidence to play it off two cushions. 6-3. So, looks like Clint's just going for a comfort break. Try and uh, compose himself. And he, he he's really done nothing wrong in this match so far. No, nothing. Yeah, it could have been a different story. Mark Boyle attempting the skill shot early on in that frame. If that red had dropped, he'd have been in a little bit of trouble. As it was, Clint Hansen, his opening red down the cushion was a great shot. And then the next shot, when he breaks out his bad ball, he got to count himself very unlucky. He's, he's quite literally not played a bad shot. 6-3 down. Dean Shields, 7-2. Massive break. Look at these reds. Look at these reds. Yep, so he's taking this to corner, just seeing where he wants to land. It's perfect. And just drag this in if he wants. Might even have enough angle to punch out towards the centre of the table. Yeah, can't see if that black goes middle. Might go both middles. But if not, he can take it long. Shouldn't be an issue. So it's just punched it out so these are the ones where you just need to not get complacent you're seven two up you know uh keep your foot on their throat so to speak anyway back we go oh dear oh dear uh oh the nightmare continues yet again dry break Again, he, he's hit them well. Yeah, time them well. Good cue ball. But no joy. 
And if Mark Boyle goes on to make this clearance here and take a 7-3 lead, can you imagine sitting there, Dan? You've done absolutely nothing wrong in your 7-3 down. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually sort of felt a bit like that against Craig Brown yesterday. But the difference was I actually did just go straight in off the break um, and I didn't control the, you know, and that felt bad enough. Yeah. God knows how Clint's going to feel. Yeah. He actually hasn't done anything wrong. So, the difficult yellow here is the one that's hampered by the two reds. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how he goes about getting on this. It's a tricky table. Pretty sure that's exactly where we wanted to be. Yeah, and we do mean exactly. I think if he can, ideally, I think he, he would like to, to bump into the red and get that out of the way, but it's the angle he leaves on the next yellow after, which is important. Yeah. So he almost needs the white to skid on after as well. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. He's played the cannon half ball. 7-3, Dean Shields. So he's... How has he messed them up? Looking for all the world to go 8-2. 8-2, you're basically there. 7-3. Do the wheels start to come off? So, is he going to try and bump this out? Rail first. That's what he tried. Well. Well, well. Time for a bit of boil magic. Just got into it a little bit too much. Run behind the yellow. So, Clint, this is what you've been staying calm for the whole time. Now's your chance. Yeah, so that's the first error we can really say from uh, Mark Boyle. Just tried to bump his bad ball out and slid past it. And he tried to put that into the middle. And I tell you what, he wasn't far away. It wasn't. And um, interestingly there, you know, Clint's, I think Clint maybe could have tried to make that plant if he wanted to. He's chosen to, uh, this is what it does to you when, when someone's playing that well. You know, he, he's left Mark a chance here at a double. And the white could be swinging around. I mean, it's such a low percentage shot, but you, you never know what can happen. But, turns out it was the uh, right decision. So there you see. Very nearly made that. He would have been snookered anyway. And here you can see what he's trying to do. He'd run that cue ball right the way back up table. But it's Clint. There's a free shot here. He's just got to work out that corner. Just needs to see. So as you can tell here. So he's going to try and make this with the black. Yep, so eight ball to kick the yellow in. It's a little bit of extra insurance.
Does this red slide past the red and yellow? Could he just catch the red? Flick it away? It does look like that. He's got to get the gap correctly. He would like to just catch this red on his way in. That's what he did. Perfect. We'll take it. Probably going to see him come down for this red at the bottom of the table as his last ball. So it's just all going to be about leaving himself the right angle on that second last ball. Well, he'd like to have come away from this cushion a little further. Yes, this is a tester. There's pressure on this. The cue ball will be heading towards perfect territory for that uh, yellow. Should he make any error here? Never in doubt. Perfect. Yeah. I think he is a little straight on this, but uh, shouldn't pose any problem. There you see, he can screw straight back to the side rail and out. That's what he's doing. Perfect. He'll, he'll, he'll be looking to get somewhere along the line of the bulk line. Yeah, slightly low on this red to middle. Just run through by that eight ball in the corner. That's what he's electing to do. So he wants to keep running a little bit here. That's okay. It's okay. It's tad not perfect. Further. Yeah, a tad further. He'd like to have been lower on it, but uh, yeah, he's going to leave a little bit of distance here. But a little bit left hand side, spin through off the cushion. There you see. He's fine. Tightens that angle up. He's kept himself in this match. It's there. So 6 4. Very, very rare error from Mark Boyle. He had that ball into the middle and just tried to develop the difficult yellow and slid past it. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it wasn't an easy clearance, but he's just so used to seeing him get them. Now as the comeback on, should have been 8-2 this, 7-3. Yeah, and 7-4, I don't know who's breaking next, but uh, it can soon change. You start to feel a little bit of pressure when you know you should have been home and dry. Yeah, eight. Your opponent starts to come back at you. 8-2 is as good as done. Um, is he on that? I think he's okay, but it is close. Break all of a sudden is a little bit more important. Delivers as normal. Only made the one ball, but he's at the table. Yeah, not as good a layout as he's been used to. The early part of this match. But ball down is the order of the day at the break. Yeah. You just want to stay at the table, don't you? Yeah. Some control. I think I think there's a bit of a route here where he can he can play the one bottom left corner and bump the one off the cushion if he wants to. Um or he can just guarantee to leave himself an angle and back himself to knock the one down the rail. But he can leave himself an angle straight away to get into his bad ball. See all the top players do that, they're always he's just looking to see what his angle's gonna be like if he does bump it out. Is it worth the risk of bumping it out when he can just knock it down the cushion? 
I think it is worth the risk if the white stays there. Mm, let's see. Now he's a bit straight. I mean, there's an argument for just rolling it through and playing this yellow in the middle. It's a delicate, delicate little positional shot, but it does go in the middle. Yeah, and he may well be doing that. Maybe not. Is he looking at playing position into this bottom left-hand corner? So again, not, not not sure what his plan is here. Is he going to try and screw back off the ball to middle? Has he got the angle? I think he can definitely get into it enough to screw into it. It's just that, and and again, it, it can't always be perfect, but you don't want to be going into a ball and having to rely on landing on that ball. What's he played there? It's uh, a miscue, is miscue. that? Miscue, he looks straight yeah. his tip. Well, 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 he's human. Just, yeah, so. I think, I think he was obviously trying to really dig in there. Yeah. Look how low he's hitting on the cue ball. Yeah, I think you could see just before he took that shot, he was looking at where he wanted to land on the side rail. Yeah. So he was looking at trying to get that yellow into the middle, the, the one that's behind the two reds. What a chance this is for Clint. Oh, dear me. Wow. Dear me. Well, let's try to break those balls, as you'll see here. Draws back. Yeah, I mean, it sounds a little harsh, saying it's not a great shot, but it didn't really have the control there, did it? No. It, it was yeah, a tough hit. You trust a little bit to luck with that, but he, he, he did have a bit more control as to how he how he went into them. And that wasn't as planned. Not as planned. Well, I think he's just about got away with it though. I think two at the two at the uh end of the table where the black is just needs to leave himself a good angle on the next one but doesn't want to be grazing the red after he plays this. Okay, so he has just grazed it, but he's fine. But he need, needs to needs to get as close to straight as possible on the uh, on the yellow in the middle of the middle of the three. He didn't like the angle, so he's actually come up table for this. That's not perfect either. Let's see from his facial expression, he's not not happy with it. Yeah, the fact that he's under that cushion makes this so much more difficult. Yeah. So, look, fine, he's on it. Is he going to put the yellow? Yes. But if he just drops it in, he's leaving a horrible cut on the black from distance. Yeah, you do feel he's got to run forward here. But, but what are you going to do? I mean, are you going to are you going to cross double it? Are you going to try and power it in and risk that? You've just got to leave yourself a shot, haven't you? No, he has cross doubled it, but the slide. Slide on the cushion means he's missed it by quite a distance. Let's 
So Clint taking this ball down the rail. I think he tried to play sort of a little bit of uh, a safety at the same time there. Yeah, almost a shot to nothing, but... Now he could play this yellow off the red, potentially. This is uh, what a crucial frame this has become. You had the perfect start, 6-3. Not a mistake made. Quite literally not a mistake made. First seven frames all off the break. And now... Here uh, are a couple of errors each. Difference between 7-4 and 6-5 in such a short race, relatively short race, at this level was massive as well. Yeah. He's playing but your shot, Andy. Is, but he's, he can't afford to play it with too much pace, can he, I don't think? No, he needs to... That's it. No. He missed it. It's not there, but he has at least covered the black. So, simple enough snooker. The one thing I would say is if he does manage to hit this yellow up and down, if he can leave the cue ball where that yellow is now and just bump the yellow out, he'd put a lot of pressure back on to Clint. But it, it has to be perfect, this. Yeah, it just needs to cover the red. That's it. That's looking this, pretty good. This is pretty good, you know. Oh, he could have done... Oh, it's just... Oh. That's a good hit, but he hasn't bumped it out. If he just catches that half ball, like you say, and, and, yeah. and covers the red with the black. Yeah, just bumps that yellow out and mm. puts a lot of pressure on. But he is really hampered here. So, fine cut to corner. Fine cut to corner and then... a. Uh, a better snooker. Yeah, a better Make snooker. And he's just pushing that ball. He can push it over the pocket. 7-5 now, Dean Shields. And when we last saw it, it was it was looking for all the world of going 8-2. Is that a turning point in the match? So just wants to push this in front of the pocket. He's looking at two cushions and flicking off the yellow. To sit behind the eight. This will be one of the best snookers you'll ever see if he gets this. This will be some shot. Oh, he's got the yellow, I think. But, uh... Yeah, at least, at least keeps him in the frame because the black isn't doesn't go effectively, so... You're stopping Clint from attacking. Again, Clint's got to be careful because if he if he leaves him on this yellow and he and he rolls up to it dead weight, he, he could get a snooker behind the black. See, like now it's 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 a low percentage shot, and even if he gets the snooker, it's gonna be. Fairly easy to get out of, but if if he can somehow get the yellow out just enough so that he can cut it in. Yeah, but he doesn't want to leave this black on, does he, on the eight ball? No. So, good pace. I think he's covered the plant. Lovely shot. Well, I know where I'd be putting it. It's <laughs> for definite. There we are. You're going to need a bit of magic here. That That's... Uh... Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, and the fact that he has this red... 
away from the two together makes it even more difficult. So is he going Jaws? He is going Jaws. Right, well, this is your chance, Clint. Yeah, smile there from uh, Mark. Played out of the Jaws. I thought for a second he was going to get the second set of Jaws. Could have happened. Yeah. So Clint's just going to bump this towards the corner pocket. No need to dice with death. Don't go too close to it. Perfect. So, that's, this is by far the biggest frame of the match so far. The only frame where either of them have made mistakes. And uh, what could have been 7-4 is now 6-5. That feels massive. Yeah, it does. All to play for. Yeah, and the... Uh, this match has changed completely. This latter... Uh, quarter, latter third of it. It really couldn't have flowed any better early on. Faultless one after the other. Look at this. Craig Brown looking at getting another one back. Is that 7-6? Seven, yeah. 7-6. Seven, 7-6 seven, six. Seven, six now. Wow. 15, 20 minutes ago. Looking like 8-2. Yeah. 7-6 down, but probably feeling the better of the two. Yeah. We saw earlier on, though, what... Uh, what Dean can do under extreme pressure. It's a player for a big finish. Straight it's a enough, ball. Is it? is it there? Oh, it's there. It's not gone down. He's made a ball. Not not an easy layout, but he'll just be pleased to be at the table. Yeah, by the look of it, I mean red to middle. It's horrible when you're in the jaws like that. But if he does elect to play that. Well, I think the red goes to the other middle. Yeah, and he's going to take it on. This is a big shot. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Oh, oh that's harsh. That is harsh. Made three off the break. Controlled the white well, was coming back in a fairly straight line and just got bumped in. What would it hit two or three other balls and got bumped in? That is harsh. Yeah, he's uh, he's not getting the run in this match. That's for certain. Very unlucky. Take another look. Uh, kicked in off. Kicked into the corner. It really is harsh, that. So Mark's just taking a bit of time here, deciding what he's going to do with his with his free shot. Is he going to move the red away from the yellow to take yellows? Yeah, so he's played that well. Go reds or yellows here, to be honest. But uh, yeah, reds. Just gives him a few more options, more balls on the table.
So all on the bulk cushion. Yeah, probably next. Yeah. I think he's got the angle to he's got no choice now. If you wanted to get the cue ball a little bit closer to it. Did he miss that? Oh, okay. It's there. So it's the ball nearest the middle pocket. It's going to be the one that uh, he needs to be careful with. He wants to get straight on that as possible. Yeah. He wants to get on it next. So his options options to top it through, find the gap, or just stun it back. He's going to check it up. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. So you probably see him just stun, stun the cue ball back three or four inches, and then play a little drag shot over the one into the corner. Dean Shields did take that frame, so it's now 8-6. So, just came back a little bit further than we thought. But he's still okay. Just dragged this in. And he doesn't want to be straight on his final red. That's the only thing he doesn't want. There you see. Drags it. Kills the pace. Leaves himself an angle. Perfect. Takes this into the corner, bumps out. There you see, a little bit low though. Yeah, that's that's quite a bit short of where he wanted to be. I mean, I thought he could. He obviously prefers to to screw the ball than. Yeah, he could have run through. He had a, he had options. Yeah. So watch the cue ball. I think he just runs into this yellow, so he knows he's okay. Fine. Perfect. 7-5. Yeah, and that break there, that was uh, cruel. Kicked off in the corner. Mark earlier in this match was kicked into the corner, but uh, fortunately for him, the eight ball dropped at the same time, and it was a re-rack. And then he breaks and clears. Yeah, and we said at the time that you know that could make such a difference. Craig Brown still fighting away. Eight six. A chance to go eight seven. Can't really see the angle here. That's not great. He's on this. It's just not got through the white there. He's on it, but he's on the wrong angle. Needs to cue this very cleanly. Just gene himself up there. Yep, hammered it in. So, is he straight on this last yellow? Can he just draw back in a straight line? Just past the blue spot or thereabouts, you would think. Well, he didn't quite hit those as hard as he has been. He didn't, no. Dry as well. Yeah. Eight seven. Dean Shields, Craig Brown. Yeah, could so easily have been eight two. Fifteen frames they've played in an hour and fifteen minutes. Not messing about. So Clint, really, yeah, we talk about luck as well. So he's finally gone dry off the break, and he hasn't left 
Hasn't left an awful lot, has he? Uh, he hasn't left an easy clearance. No. Work to do. I don't know if this... It doesn't look a dead set plant. I don't know how easy it's going to be to make the plant. On yellows. If not, he needs to develop them at some point. Well, a, a clever shot, but needed to cover the bag. And he hasn't. Would have felt a lot better about... He, he's obviously only left a, a very thin cut on this red on the side cushion. But um, wanted this bottom right-hand corner welded up as well. Can he see the red on the bark line, do you think? Maybe, actually, yeah. It's a possibility. It really was important that Clint covered this pocket, but if anything, if you're being really harsh, you could say it was a little bit of a lapse of concentration. Maybe you thought it was impossible not to cover the bag. Yeah, and this is the better shot of the two, isn't it? If you can play this ball on the bark line. Played it safe. A couple of inches short of getting a snooker of his own. So we've got a long yellow. It's it the thing. Toughy. It's the thing as well, though. That, that this long yellow, he feels like he probably has to go for it, but he's 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 leaving mark on his uh, on the red into the corner pocket that he should have had covered if he misses it. What a shot. Yeah, what a shot. Superb shot, that. Courage. Bottle. Punched it into the corner. I and mean, look where he's left the cue ball. He's literally perfect on the red into the corner. Could have then picked off the other one into the middle. And picked off all of these down. That was, that was frame lost, if he misses that. Yeah. Brilliant shot. Tough enough pot to begin with, but to push it through as he did. For perfect position. Well, Fantastic. You don't win the World Championships without having to produce under pressure. Play the big shots. So, we're leaving this plant. Second to last ball. The only issue there is... Just wants to be right on this uh, this yellow. So he's going to drop this in. Just have to be careful with that shot. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this 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 can go wrong now. Yeah, I thought he may have left himself straight there. He could have just screwed straight back out if he had to. Yeah, he's all, he's caught the cushion a bit too soon with it. Oh, this is really. This is crucial. Oh, he's dug in really well there. You can see how much he kind of bit into the cue ball. They've really, really got some... Like, and on these cloths as well, the, the, the cue ball does react differently. You can get into the white. The, the uh, When you play a soft screw like that, it kind of... Um, you get instant take. There isn't that slide before it takes. Perfect. Seven six. Dean's shaking his head. Are we going to take it that uh, Dean is yellows, maybe, and he's missed an opportunity? Either way, he was shaking his head. He wasn't happy. Yeah, and I've just been told it was Dean Shields' break. So that run out, that mistake that he may have made, would have been for the match. Talking of mistakes. Well, well, well.
So Clint's made a ball and he's is his chance. These aren't too bad. Dean's on yellows. This is tough. Craig could have left this anywhere. Oh, he hasn't, has he? What a shot that is. What a shot, Dean Shields. Yeah, he's just got to be careful, hasn't he? That last yellow to black. Yeah, we'll try and keep you uh, informed on both. He's a good angle here. I think that's a pretty good shot from Dean. See, Clint's... Is he on this ball? He wants to be, doesn't he? He yeah. wants to be on it now. He wants to be on that now, yeah. If he isn't, get on it after this ball. Ball to middle. Just a little bit more work. Needs to bounce out, this. Yeah, it hasn't. What's Dean on there? Is he on it? If it holds up, he is. Needs to stop running. Needs to stop running. Wow. Heart and mouth. These aren't gimmies either. This, to put yourself in the grand final. £10,000 to the winner. It's there. Well played, Dean Shields. Well played. Yeah, held himself together. Had a massive lead at one point. But he got over the line in the end. Talking of holding himself together. What a shot that is. And it doesn't look anywhere near as good as it is but he needed to be straight on that he's perfect just top this through and then he just leave himself in a little window where he can cut that yellow in trace a right hand side maybe swing it around two cushions Should yeah black. he's spin it out doesn't he yeah he's um his frame's far from over he needs to miss that first red spin it off two cushions doesn't want to be catching that first red. It will be. It will be tight. Yeah, he's flicked it. He's flicked it. That's no good. Another twist. What'd you do here? Do you play off the red to middle? He's looking at it. Can't play the skill shot, can you? No, does he play red off the bottom to try and kick it in off the red in the middle? Like that? No, he like hasn't. Like that? Any. Oh, my God. There you go. Oh, my God. There you go. <laughs> oh, my word. What a shot that is. Wow. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Clint what a Hansen. shot that is. Jesus. That even he finds it funny. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Wow. I don't know why he's laughing. I'd be crying. What a shot. Yeah. Great <laughs> shot. What an exhibition of pool this has been. Wow. At 7 all. He's not 7 1 up, cruising, showboating. That's at 7-6 down against the machine. Yeah. Played in great spirit. Semi-final. Both players. A lot of respect for each other. So, Mark Boyle, he needs this break of his to work more than ever. He's made a ball. I think the reds plant into the top corner. He's on a yellow as well. I think. Yeah, you can see there he's looking at yellow off black if he needs to, but... Bit of work to do. Yeah. He's had easier finishes in this uh, 
semi-final, but... Oh, he may have gone red here, I'll be honest. I think there's an argument for both. He's taking his extension, just to have another study. If he does elect to take yellows, he wants to be getting up table. Early doors for me, if he's going to play that off the eight. Yellows it is. The problem as well is is what are you going to be on next after you play the yellow off the, the black into the middle? Yeah, that's why I'd like to play it early. Yeah, are you pushing it towards this other yellow or are you going to remove that yellow first? Or are you going to potentially screw into it now off the side cushion? The bottom and left? Yeah. I think that's the shot. That's what he's played. What he's played, I think that's come out pretty good, but I don't know if the black goes in the middle. The yellow's come out enough, so it does go into the corner, but... Yeah, it's not, not clear. I think it probably does drop. Do you think if you... I mean, if not, he can play it long, but... Not going to be easy. It's good position on this second to last yellow. That's good. That's very good. You want to get as close as you possibly can to this yellow, but you don't want to risk snookering yourself. Yeah, and do we think it goes to middle a uh, eight? Well, it, I mean, if it does go to middle, the frames, the, the frames as good as done. It's just about getting position on this yellow. If it goes to middle now, then then it's frame over. But if it doesn't, does he risk playing a cannon? Cannon on the red, perhaps, and play the black into the left middle? Or does he just top it through and take it long? Looks like he's playing it with screw. I think he's going to cannon the red. Oh, it's gone wrong. He's just flicked the black first. Another twist. So, you go across table to kick it into the middle. I don't think he's got much choice. That's what he's doing. Got a good chance of getting this, I feel. Got a good chance of getting it. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, talk about plucking out the big shots when you really need it. Yeah, both players, the last two frames... I had to find something for that uh, eight ball. Get this straight across. But don't get me wrong, it's not the hardest shot he's ever going to play, but under the pressure, that's not easy. No, he had to catch it more or less half ball. Yep. Yeah, shaking his head. He just got, got into the white a little bit too much, didn't he? Eight seven, Mark Boyle. It's been a classic as this match. Set off like a steam train. In this back end, we've had uh, a few messier tables to try and sort out after the break. We've had some spectacular eight balls. Needs a ball. Needs, Needs a, a ball. ball. He's, got, He's one. got one, yeah. He's got one. He's got one, and uh, first glance, I think. I think these reds are very, very nice. Very nice. If anything, it's the eight ball that may, I'll say, pose him a problem. Maybe a little bit strong, but... Uh, 
Yeah, I think he just will probably end up having to plan it into one of the corner pockets rather than yeah. the, the sort of unmissable middle pocket that it might have been. This game's had everything. It has. Yeah, you're looking at uh, these three reds top, red to corner, and he may well elect to take the eight into this pocket. He's just potted that red in. It just depends. We'll see. Yeah, just needs to leave himself as natural an angle as he can on this one. Maybe a little further off the cushion would have been perfect there. Definitely wanted more angle than that. Wanted another couple of inches at least. Yeah, don't want to be forcing these. He wanted to be out past that balk line if he could, or somewhere in that region. Yeah. He's forced to play this with a little bit more pace, Dan, as you say. Well, he got out to balk line. Just made that look very easy. So, does he take it into that corner I've mentioned? I think you're right. I think... Yeah. Uh, I mean, there is another shot. He could play two rails to take it into the opposite corner. Bottom right of your screen as you look now. But yeah, he's played that well. Look, look at that. Absolutely perfect. What a match. Class. Cool, calm and collected under pressure. From the pair of them. So we're going to come down to one frame. Hill, one break. hill, yeah. Hill, hill. Pro semi-final. Been a race tonight. It all comes down to one frame. One break. And it's this man that will be breaking. If you were going to put your house on somebody making a ball off the break in a deciding frame, it would be Mark Boyle, wouldn't it? It would, without doubt, yeah. Most definitely. He's feeling it a little bit. He's uh, he's toweling his cue down. This is huge. Huge prize money. Points. Everything at stake here. Everything. Well, look at that. Wow. Look at that. Wow. It's devastating. I mean... It almost feels unfair. It just does. Look, look at, at it. That. Look at the split. I mean, you deserve a good split when you hit them that well. But look at the split. Look at these reds. One... One positional shot to play, maybe, that he's got to slow roll this into the middle and maybe cheek in a little bit. Of, I'm trying to find problems here. I can't. Well, I mean, this first shot leads him to the, the the tricky ball, really. Yeah. Would he like to have a little bit less angle on this one? Maybe. He'll know better than us from being right behind the shot. Either way, you just snapped your hand off for this split. Would have liked to have just gone a little further, probably. Yeah. But I think he's okay to middle if he needs to. I think you can also actually uh, just screw the white back. Yeah. Six to eight inches and play the one next to the black into the corner. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Ball to middle. Yeah, just just about straight enough, isn't he? I think. Mm, hasn't quite gone as far as he wanted to. You could overhit that a little bit and you'd have been fine. Yep, you could have run through, just nudge into the eight, as it is. Right hand side, and this needs to bite. Is he playing a cannon? 
Yeah, decided to play the cannon instead. Wise move. Looked like he was going to run through, try and uh, check it up. Just pushes the ball, promotes it towards the corner. Can he reach this? Is he worried? He hasn't got an extension left. He's stretching a little. Uh, he's played that to perfection. Decision to make here. Does he does he take the uh, red into the bottom right corner first? Or does he play the one in the middle? Does he feel like he can play this with a, enough check side to straighten the white back up? No, so he's going middle first. I don't think he likes that. I don't think that's the angle he wanted. Yeah, the thing with this is you, you're not on the right line, are you? Nope. It's about pace. To the point now, does he does he actually top it through rather than screw it back? I think yeah, he has to. got to top it. Got to top it, and that is perfect. What a game. What a standard. It's been an absolute pleasure to commentate on this. Surely there's not another twist. This to book his place in the final. What a match that was. Two, two players at the peak of their powers. Elite players at the peak of their powers just putting on a show neither one of them crumbling under the pressure a mistake hasn't cost anyone that match just pure excellence uh, there were times in that game where they really had to dig out some big shots under pressure and they both did it amazing yeah I know it's a cliche but they, they didn't deserve to be a loser in that match no they really didn't they really didn't Mark hasn't played any better than Clint. They've both played absolutely perfect. Yeah, I think They've had can... one frame. There was one frame where they both missed a couple. And that was at 6-4. It could have gone 7-4 or 6-5. And I mean, just a bit of run of the balls cost Clint the match there. I think the breaks, really. The breaks, yeah. yeah exactly that. The breaks. And that was it. And that's what we said right at the beginning of this game. The breaks, such an important part. And we're just about to hand you over now to Kevin and Mark in the studio with Mark Boyle. Thanks, guys. And uh, we're going to give uh, Mark Boyle a little bit of a rest before the final. And uh, Mark Pickworth just reflecting back on that match. What have we seen there? That is two of the best players in the world doing their stuff on the biggest stage. Absolutely phenomenal match. Well, what a blockbuster. I mean, we just saw Mark Boyle just come out of the arena there. He's just a, good, a, little, a big puff of the cheeks because no doubt he was feeling a, a little bit under pressure there. Yeah, the split absolutely perfect. You know, if you want to really you know, take the winning uh, break out at that opportunity, that's the, the clearance you want. But there would have been some pressure on that, especially against a player like Clint Ianson. But wow, what a blockbuster that was. That is certainly going to go down in the uh, IPA folklore, you know, in, in anyone's uh, top 10 IPA classics. That That is going to be up there. I mean, what a time to pull out a break. Um, I mean, we talk about the Mark Boyle cut break, but what a break there. Those balls just literally exploded. They'd near enough give up themselves, didn't they? They just wanted to get off the table more than anything. And uh, the, 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 work, the power he generates mm. on that cut break is phenomenal. You know, that's not just luck or anything like that. That is like months and probably years of practice of making sure he hits that cue ball just so it doesn't arise up above the uh, the actual slate bed. Because mm. he has to hit it absolutely plumb every time and he seems to do it more often than not. And uh, when you sat in that seat just admiring playing pool and the way that he breaks off, you just think, wow, what can you do against that absolute machine? Mm. So we'll pre preview the final. Uh, Mark Boyle and Dean Shearer.